Hey, what's going on there, folks? How's it going? Earthmaster here on this end. It is a Friday. Finally made it here to the weekend. Friday, March 8th already. Goodness, 2024. It's about 11.56 a.m. p.m. a.m. <laughs> One of the two. It's a.m., right? It, it almost feels like it's afternoon already. All right, latest earthquake activity out here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a... A uh, little earthquake out here in Oklahoma. Also a 4.5 showing up here across the Japan area. We did see some further adjustment overnight. Uh, I know we were kind of waiting for that over here. It's a little bit out of the region where I thought we'd be seeing some larger activity. But it is in that zone where we've seen quite a bit of clustering going on there across the Philippines recently. Uh, we did see a 6.0 coming in uh, just after 1 o'clock my time here into the area of the southern end of the philippine trench 125 kilometers deep there for that six pointer now that is in an area that has seen a lot of swarming out here recently it looks like that has made some adjustment uh, or is currently making some adjustment up here across the northwestern corner of the filipino plate there stretches from about taiwan to the japan area so uh keep an eye on this region right here we are definitely seeing some elevated activity here following that larger movement down south there in the philippines uh, also a little bit of uh, yeah there's where that 4.5 is coming in uh usgs picking up on that yet doesn't uh doesn't look like it. these two earthquakes here are from yesterday so uh it is definitely making some adjustment here across the area we'll continue to watch that uh down south seeing a little bit of movement out in the australia area 3.6 coming in there to the uh, eastern side of australia with all the movement here recently going on um around this area i'm still a little worried for new zealand because they're on the plate boundary we really haven't seen that much adjustment taking place here uh, mostly deeper earthquakes underneath the north island area but let's go back here the last seven days here and show you guys we've seen some larger movement out here uh, in the last week couple sixes including an upper six along the uh, plate boundary here south of new zealand around the macquarie islands area uh, and then also a bunch of activity up north here. Very minimal movement across the plate boundary itself here where New Zealand sits on. And uh, with this activity uh, further inland away from the plate boundary, they're in Australia. I'm surprised the USGS is reporting it, but 3.5. Um, EMSC reporting a 3.6. But hey, uh, either way, they're at least reporting it. I was just outside of Sydney, by the way. Uh, so obviously a highly populated region and uh you know not a big earthquake but it just goes to show you the pressure and strain out here against the plate boundary and of course new zealand sits right on it we'll continue to watch new zealand for some further activity uh it's really not showing much right now uh but we are getting some further deep building earthquakes up here to the north uh around the tonga trench this one almost 600 kilometers deep here for that 5.3 so keep an eye on New Zealand area. We've still got uh, some gaps to fill in here across the Vanuatu area, uh, Solomon Islands, and uh, Papua New Guinea as well. Uh, awfully quiet. So got activity all across the plate boundary here, except for New Zealand. Still, again, watching that. Um, another 3.1 coming in here to the Java Trench. So a lot of forward migration going on here in terms of the plate dynamics. Uh, let me show you guys the... Uh, the plate activity here so over here across the philippines obviously this area gets hit with a lot of earthquakes because look at where the arrows are all pointing to right you got the pacific plate arrows pointing towards the west eurasia plate pointing towards the southeast australia plate pointing towards the northeast um so yeah a huge crunch line going on here that's why we're always seeing large-scale earthquake activity and just earthquake activity in general um, compared to over here where none of the arrows are pointing towards each other uh, but they are still moving against each other here slowly uh, and slip accumulation is a lot less over here in terms of the built-up strain uh, but over here where we're looking at all these arrows pointing towards today uh, with the elevated activity obviously it looks like uh, you know quite a bit of strain building up here in this region uh, but watch the quiet zones again new zealand and across this large gap area all right, uh, West Coast, as far as uh, California and whatnot goes, let's see what we got out here. Uh, not a whole lot up in the Pacific Northwest. Getting a little swarming going on once again outside of Reno now. This has just been an ongoing thing here for the past couple weeks. Uh, we even had some swarming 
prior to the last 30 days not showing up here on a 30-day chart but uh, yeah you can see 109 earthquakes um some of the activity stirring up here in the last day as well in the last 24 hours so not for sure what's building up here um reno does get some larger quakes it's been a little while uh, but there's numerous fault systems up here and uh just kind of an earthquake swarm going on there right now so we'll continue to watch that and uh, see if it turns into anything the rest of california looks like a beautiful day out here do have some rain coming in uh in a couple days or so i think maybe tomorrow or the next day but uh yeah not a whole lot of earthquake activity very minimal hopefully i didn't jinx it but uh it looks like just typical activity out there for now in terms of microquake movement yellowstone national park nothing showing up here but that doesn't mean there isn't anything let's go over here and check and just double check and see what we got um well yeah maybe there isn't anything uh looks like some uh smaller quake activity it's this is some type of environmental noise it looks like i'm not for sure what it is it's really not showing up across any of the other seismograph stations uh now that six pointer that came into the philippines a lot of times we'll be able to spot that um but uh, i'm really not seeing that six pointer here out uh, on these graphs but uh Sometimes we'll be able to see that uh, large signature or large earthquake signature here, even thousands of miles away from Japan uh, in the Philippines area. So as far as earthquake activity, I really don't see any out there across Yellowstone. I was looking pretty hard there, but uh, not a whole lot going on right now. All right, further out and about uh, Texas, New Mexico area, still getting some earthquake activity out here. This is uh, northwest of Carlsbad, Bad, New Mexico. I'm um, pretty certain they may have a few oil fields out here. Uh, there's some wastewater disposal ponds. Let me zoom in here. See those? Uh, those are not green swimming pools out there for the uh, hardworking oil folks, but uh, those are wastewater disposal ponds out there and a couple others. All these little checkered boxes here, are, uh, the holding tanks, really close nearby to the uh, earthquake that struck this morning as well for a 3.0. So just continuing to see earthquake activity out there and that will continue no doubt for years to come in the future 1.8 oklahoma area not a big earthquake just a little small microquake there uh one little spotty earthquake on the new madrid seismic zone this was from uh yeah it's from this morning about two o'clock my time here 2.0 not a whole lot of activity stirring up out here for now the puerto rico area uh, I believe a lot of that activity from yesterday, a handful from today as well. Nothing serious going on uh, for now. Look at South America. South America has died off a little bit there uh, overnight, it looks like, but we're still seeing some twos down there. Most of the momentum and pressure out here today in the last few hours looks like it is wanting to advance here across the western areas of the um, Filipino plate and this uh, Java Trench area. So keep an eye on that region here today uh, but again these we got these quiet zones once these come to a point of uh, uh, you know I've seen uh, a little haltage there of the earthquake activity we'll start to watch these regions and these boundaries back building here uh, but we've got a lot of deep activity here across the uh, Tonga Trench here recently Mediterranean area not a whole lot some deeper quake activity though it looks like a 3.1 coming in fairly deep around the uh greece area or just north of there looks like northeast the atlantic ocean nothing going on here uh south africa area I've seen a couple threes um so let's go check out iceland real quick see what we got out there i don't think it's popped up i haven't even checked the earthquake map here today uh, about 27 earthquakes uh scattered out and about little separate swarming going on here north of iceland along the rift boundary over here across Grindavik area, yeah, a handful of earthquakes, really nothing going on. I don't think we're going to see this thing kick up until we see further um, larger movement across these divergent zones. It just makes sense. We've seen it before. Uh, these guys have been saying the same thing here, increased likelihood of a volcanic eruption for two weeks now. Uh, but I haven't seen that earthquake activity that I'm looking for uh, prior to any eruptive events. So um, that's what I'm looking for. So for now... Uh, we're probably just going to stay as is, kind of at a neutral state until then. As uh, far as the accumulation of magma down below the surface, obviously it is there, uh, but it's sitting down there. 
and um, I don't think we've got enough pressure yet to build through the surface areas for an eruptive event. Uh, Grindavik area, uh, here's the last last few months here of vertical displacement. These are eight hour run times. Notice the most recent one here. Oh man, that just kind of went way large, but this one right here, this last run time of eight hours is above the previous one. So uh, definitely still seeing the elevated magma accumulation below the surface, uh, but I don't think that's quite enough yet to see any uh, eruptive activity. All right, uh, Alaska area handful of smaller quakes there nothing major going on same for the Hawaii area really uh quiet out there for right now after uh you know a couple months there of elevated earthquake activity things have just kind of toned down for now as far as space weather activity goes did see uh did see a little CME activity um I think it was overnight here uh we're still expecting uh looks like maybe a G1 class storm here this is going to be between 0 and 600 time frame on the 9th uh, UTC time. And it is currently uh, UTC time on the 8th of 2006. So we're looking at uh, here in about four hours or so, possibly overnight tonight. Uh, we could see this here, at least here in the States, uh, a potential glancing blow from a uh, CME, not a big one, but uh, a little CME that may give us a little clipper of the edge uh, to provide us some G1 class storming. Uh, but really, I'm not expecting much. That's that's just what they have here on the forecast. Uh, again, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out, right? All right. Uh, storm prediction center. Well, let's see here what we got for the uh, sunspots before we leave. I mean, it's just was hoping for some growth here amongst this sunspot and uh it's about the only complex sunspot out here on the on the earth facing side of the sun but there's a uh, yeah there, i mean even that is not a whole lot of promising events it uh, looks like we did well <laughs> look at this i mean we're way down here in the b flare category how often do you see that not very often you know and there's a little bitty C flare, just a C, uh, what is that, C something, C 1.7, woo, wow, not a big deal, uh, we're still leveling out here in the B flare category, so that just tells you how low these energies are right now, currently with the sunspots, uh, SFI is going way down to about 137, and, um, you know, a look at these sunspots here, they're really not all that promising in terms of producing any flaring. Uh, we got an 80% chance for a C flare. M flare at 20. I don't know why X flare is up here for 5%. I'm guessing because of 3599, but looking at the magnetic uh, structure harbors, I I don't see any way it could ever produce an X flare with that. So that's just my own observation. Not for sure why Kevin has it on here. Maybe he's just following the uh, the Space Weather Prediction Center potentials, but uh, just that's, <laughs> yeah, not going to happen. All right, uh, Storm Prediction Center here on Earth in terms of severe weather potential. Well, got a slight risk out here across portions of the south. There is a broad area of a 5% tornado risk out here today. Uh, Montgomery, Alabama, Columbus, Georgia, Auburn, Alabama. Heads up. That's what's going on out here today. Even if you're in the 2% zone, heads up as well. Keep your weather radio on and nearby. Uh, you know, listen to the weather reports, watch the TV, because uh, it's a very important time of year. Well, tornadoes can happen any time of year, but it's very important springtime. Uh, these tornadoes can get rather strong and long tracked. Uh, so, you know, heads up. Also, some wind and some hail threats out there as well today in those areas. But main concern is going to be uh, the tornado potential. And there's some of that storming coming in right now. Uh, there to the area. On the GFS map, uh, West Coast activity. Let's go over here to the West Coast and check it out. See what's going on for the Western U.S. We have a weak system coming in here. Going to bring some light showers, mainly about Yuba City northward into Oregon. They're going to get a little bit more. That's for uh, Saturday. Uh, a little bit bigger system coming in on Sunday night into Monday. That's going to bring a little bit more broader area of rain showers down to probably the San Joaquin Valley as well. Elevated snow 
or snow up in the elevated uh, areas. So more accumulation going on there on top of the, all that snow that we've recently seen. And it looks like maybe another storm system coming in on Tuesday as well. But after that, things kind of warming up out here. Um, I'm not noticing anything of unusual activity in terms of strong storming. But uh, we are going to get some warmer temperatures out here. A week, a week of about mid to upper 70s. So that sounds good to me. I can get out there, get some gardening done. Um, I don't know. It might be a little bit too early in the year to plant a garden. You never know. Uh, because it looks like we do have some colder systems coming back in towards the end of March. Uh, but far as the jet stream patterns out here, the jet stream tells us what's going to happen. Not only in California, but also for the rest of the states. It's very important to watch the jet stream with the upper air dynamics. Because that's what kind of moves everything around, right? As far as the low pressure systems and whatnot. The, uh, the patterns out here. Uh, there is our current situation here. Here's the West Coast. There's a little bit of a dip here in the jet stream. That's going to bring those low pressure systems here to Northern California and bring a little bit of rain with it. There's a second storm there as we head into early next week. Uh, and, then the, and then after that, we start noticing this split in the jet stream right here. Massive high pressure ridge building up as we head into next weekend. That is going... Look at that. I do not like that. <laughs> that is not a good uh, thing. I mean, if you like dry, warm weather, yes, that may be your thing, but uh, I, that's just a little crazy looking. Either way, um, that high pressure is going to uh, sit around the West Coast for a little bit, it looks like. And then maybe, it looks like we're starting to get a little bit of strengthening going on here. Depends on this high pressure. Uh, but it looks like maybe one solid jet stream track right here that could finish off hopefully march with a little bit of moisture we'll have to watch that um it looks like that may want to stream right in here to the area uh, and of course with this higher jet stream pattern you get these stronger storms uh, so we'll watch that and see how the uh the end of march plays out but we've got a couple storm systems to deal with here in california uh, oregon and uh, washington for a little bit as well but uh, uh i'm ready for about a week of 70s i can take that that's not that big of a deal all right, uh, live seismographs look fairly calm. One little earthquake there on the Hot Caves Hawaii station. Aside from that, things look fairly quiet on the live stream graphs. Uh, what did I see up there? There was a 2.5. Looks like a recent earthquake came in there to the Idaho area. Another 3.6 Philippines area. Just fairly active. You know, got to keep an eye on these areas, though, as I mentioned in the video. We'll catch you guys back out here tonight. It's Friday. I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, it's nice out. Got some school stuff I got to do over the weekend. And um, I don't know if I want to barbecue. I kind of feel like I'm barbecued out recently. You can only eat so much meat. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It might just might make it a kid day. Let the kids outside and run around and uh, just enjoy some sunshine and kick back in a lawn chair and maybe work on my suntan. All right, folks, have a good one. Catch you guys back out here a little bit later tonight. Take care.